back to the 14A Sports Radio Show. No. <laughs> Thank God that's not live oh, on us. We were catching up on our celeb board during the uh, commercial break. Good Lord. Well done. All right, so uh, we had a couple of coaching hires in the NFL that we got to get to, but there was a very interesting piece from Tom Carpenter of ESPN.com today, uh, or not today, but a couple of days ago. I was writing about Jimmy Graham, the tight end for the uh, New Orleans Saints. However, Jimmy Graham is set to become a tight end this year. The now, tight end? Free agent. Free agent, I'm sorry. Well, I think uh, you know, we're watching the porn, you know. So <laughs> yeah, I, you know gets you all excited <laughs> about guys in football. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> it's interesting because now New Orleans can use that franchise tag on Graham. Uh, now here, here's the problem. If he gets franchised as a tight end, he's set to make, I believe it's six, was it six and a half mil? Right. But the thing is, he only took 111 snaps as a tight end. So on the transit, Graham and his people, they're trying to say, no, he should be tra- uh, he should be franchised as a wide receiver because there he's got 700 or uh, 373 uh, routes that he ran from the slot and from the outside. So and, sure. and and then you know he'd be owed about 11 mil at that point. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I guess I don't know who would decipher what actually position that he is. I guess I don't know if that's a like an ML, like a, not MLB, but a players association thing. Would they fight for that? I guess I, I don't know if they're what's say in the contract verbiage to say yeah. who determines what he is or what he isn't. Yeah, you know, I, he's listed on every program, every uh, you know website. He's a tight end. We know Jimmy Graham is well, in the in the traditional sense of right. football. He is, but he's not used as a tight end. Understand, understand. But it's not like you know, it's not like baseball where it's like, oh, he's a second base or a first base guy. Yeah, you, know, you could say he's a tight end, but if you line him up as a receiver, I just think that so facto you can't go switching this now. And now the fact that you know he can make five more million dollars off this, I'm sure the Saints are sitting there like, no, he's a tight end, he's a tight end. There's no way, no. Well, you saw the Saints are tight with their money. I mean, obviously after oh the whole God. contract negotiations that they had to go through with Drew Brees, yeah. So they're not going to be uh, willy nilly to just go throw money around, especially to a guy that's, you know. Injury, you know, injury prone a little. Right. Um, that we've seen over the past couple of years. Obviously, a major talent. But yeah, I, I guess it would be you know have to go to like an arbitration or something like that yeah, to this, determine this, what it would what it would happen to him. This uh, website is just saying it'd be it'd be a major fight uh, that would take a while to resolve if he did try to claim himself as a wide receiver. Uh, you know, it said most likely it'd work out a compromise to a long term deal. That's what usually happens. Just because of, uh, of the cap hit that these teams take when they franchise a guy. Um, they try to obviously work out a long-term deal to spread the money out over a number of years. But yeah. I think it's interesting, like you said, the Saints are definitely in a, in a tough cap situation. Uh, Walsh made the point. They probably have Breeze restructure. Uh, the Saints as a whole, their windows kind of closing a little bit now, huh? They, yeah. Uh, they, uh, Breeze is 35 now. They, they no. might have – that window might have come and gone. Actually, happy birthday to Drew Breeze today. It's his birthday. Ah, look at that. And it's Gordon McKay's birthday. Yeah. Shout out to Gordon. Oh. Same week for him. But, uh, no, it should be interesting. Um, I, I would say, just because, as you said, he's, I, I would say go, he's a tight end, regardless of the routes he ran, you know, how they utilize him. I, I don't think that's – I think his position's a tight end. I think that's how it would fall. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess on the official Saints, like, roster, right, you can only carry X amount in each position, I would assume, right? Right. And I guess I, they carry him as a tight end, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are I restrictions could, on – Quarterback, there are I, – I don't know if they're – like, are there for other positions? I, I – thought that but i mean i, I could be wrong i, I think there, there's, there's a like, there's a max that you have to have on the roster like whether it be two or three or whatever it may minimum be minimum or maximum i, I mean, thought there was like a max you can carry at x position oh maybe there is yeah well that's if that's, the, if that's the case if that i don't know if that's true if that's the case then he's got to go as a tight end then it definitely be a so tight it might end. just be me point but so yeah so breeze actually counts 18.4 mil against the cap for the saints this year and you know they're. Tw- I think they're going to be anywhere from twelve to sixteen mil in the hole uh, on cap room this year. So very interesting. But I'm uh, surprised that you never had anything like this earlier, especially on like the defensive side, where it's like like a linebacker versus a defensive end or right. like, something along those lines. Because it's you know, I could see it there much happen much easier than a receiver versus a tight end. You never really see that a lot yeah. at all. But well, I mean Jimmy Graham, one of a kind. But know? it's almost like saying like if a running back caught like let's say caught a hundred passes, he's not a receiver now. Right? So, yeah. You know. So, Absolutely. 
it's a, it's a tough I think they're reaching. Make, I think they're reaching here. No, yeah. it's a negotiated tactic. You know, I would say, well, we're going to declare ourselves wide receiver to save the to save the fight. You know, let's negotiate a long term deal and get us some get us some guaranteed yeah. money. I mean, that's the goal of all these NFL guys because, like, uh, not like the other sports, it's not guaranteed, right? Major League Baseball, you sign a contract, you get in every penny. Basketball back. too. Like what's going to happen with A Rod? He's going to collect that sixty million that he's owed. But the NFL, you know, it's only guaranteed. Uh, what they make guaranteed, you know, so that's the goal yeah. of each guy is to get as much guaranteed as possible. Yeah, I mean, far and away the best player at his position in the NFL. I mean, so, I mean, he should get paid. I don't know if the Saints are going to pay him, but he should. Talk about cap situations. The Giants are going to be in a tough cap situation. They're going to have to have uh, Roll probably restructure, Eli definitely restructure, um, and you want to get into coaching changes. They just made some drastic coaching moves, yeah. which were unexpected. Um, how well, everyone they thought were. Sullivan was the guy that I, was in I the said, door. It, you know, just. Tom Coughlin kind of keeping it in the family. Sullivan familiar with the, uh, you know, he was receivers coach, familiar obviously with the with Coughlin. Coughlin familiar with him, familiar with that offense. But you know, Mara came out and said, said you know, the the offense is broken and we need to fix it. And they're going yeah. to a drastic change. They're bringing in the quarterback coach from Green Bay, McAdoo, to come uh, be the coordinator. They got rid of longtime uh, tight end coach Mike, Mike Pope, Pope yeah. who they were twenty years. Uh, yeah, over the, with the, the only guy to be a part of the Giants team. On all four Super Bowl teams. Wow. All five Super Bowl appearances. Appearances, yeah. right. Um, they got rid of uh, the running back coach who had been there since Coughlin got hired. Yep. Um, so they're making major changes on the offensive side of the ball. The quarterback coach and wide receiver. The wide receiver coach is actually Gilbride's son. Um, their fate uh, has yet to be announced, but you would assume that they'd probably be on their way out too. So yeah. three Giants, uh, the Giants restructuring their whole offensive uh, coaching staff, which – it's very on giant like. That yeah. that's not how the Giants usually operate. No, well, you know, they really. haven't had a, a terrible season like this in quite some time. You know, I mean, this was an absolute fail of a season for them, you know. So some heads have to roll. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily gonna be a lot of the players. Uh I think it's gonna be a significant I think they're gonna have a lot of turnover, uh, especially on the offensive side. Going yeah. into the next season you say obviously you got Eli. Right, Victor Cruz he signed long term. We got your yeah. the old line, yeah, you got some old guys Randall, there. Maybe Jernigan. Uh, Journey and, in, uh, and on the line, you got uh, Pew and, and Beatty, who broke his – if he didn't break his leg, but he's got a broken leg. So you only have maybe five guys that you say Running back to positions a huge question mark. Wilson, who knows? So, no, the Giants are definitely a team in flex. Uh, yeah. In flux, spe- uh, but I mean, specifically and, on the offensive then, side. Yeah, you know, when they first started talking about this, uh, you know, was Boomer Sison came out and was like, you know, I'd love to see him go out and get somebody new and get somebody that will, you know, challenge Eli and, and go off book and not, like, you know, kind of coddle Eli or, you know. Say yeah, he's been coddled. I mean, I guess you know he's familiar. I don't know. Yeah, challenge I guess he's comfortable. Maybe, yeah, and and when this happened, Coughlin and a lot of a lot of stuff he said about it was actually very true to that case of like you know if they got to learn new stuff, hopefully we get another fire in their ass and you know hopefully get him a little more motivated. And from everything that you know Coughlin said about this guy McAdoo, I mean the only thing that worries me is his first time play calling. But from everything that they said about him, that you know he's. Tough knows he's you know worked hard to get where he is. Um, you know he's worked with Aaron Rodgers obviously, so you know he knows how to work with a, a big time quarterback. Obviously, that Green Bay offense has been very successful over the past couple of years. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, McCarthy called the plays all the time, but it sounds like you know they're looking to go kind of in a different direction, which I'm not. I'm not that upset about. No, I mean, I, I guess we'll not. see when it. You know when. You know, the rubber meets the road, and we'll see how it happens. But. I think it's kind of tough, too, you know, where you try to put that stick down on Eli. I mean, the guy's got two Super Bowls. You know, it's hard to, you know, be tough on a guy like he that. Also, not, not, not to say that Eli's the kind of guy that's going to get away with stuff, but, you know, you just worry that, you know, you don't want heads to clash. But well, a guy with a guy, you know, first-time offensive Eli's coordinator. Eli's that, that big-time personality, though. Right, you know? right. I mean, but he has thrown 20 interceptions multiple times yeah. in his career, you know, so it's and, like. And, the, you know, you say he has two Super Bowls, and absolutely – but you, you can't rest on your laurels, right? You got to keep getting yeah. better. You can't yeah. just keep saying, oh, "Well, I already won." You got to keep getting better, improving. Uh, you know, uh, challenge them. Uh, it's not like a New England situation where New England's been. I mean, they haven't won a Super Bowl in you know, almost ten years, I guess I would say. But they've been there every year. I mean, they've had six first round buys. I mean, Bill Check and Brady are every single year. Oh, yeah. the but they've gone through numerous coordinators, not at their own behest. Well, a lot just, of I mean, guys just got people hired. getting hired. And stuff. But, but the Giants have missed the playoffs the past four of the five years. Yeah. And I mean, you, you make the excuse that every time they go in, they win recently. But you got to see more consistent winning, you know, Absolutely. from, from especially if you're going to hold on to a coach or, you know, a, a coordinator. I mean, it, it's got to be success. I mean, especially in New York, you know, it's. And let's be honest, it's probably been, you know, one of the worst divisions in football over the last couple of years, you know, in terms of win-loss records. I mean, I understand that the, you know, all every single team within that division has an incredible rivalry. 
So, you know. I mean, it's it's tough. because I mean, there's a lot of big-time programs there, too, with Dallas and the Giants there. I mean, even Washington's got a big market. Philly's got a big market. So you, you get a lot of tough matchups. All right. Which it seems like, you know, they're always playing in prime time somewhere. You know, they're, you know, Dallas is always in prime time. Giants are always in prime time. It's just but, a I mean, mediocre prime set time. Well, you know, you got you to win, though. You gotta... The divisions as a whole are very ebb and flow. I mean, look at that, uh, the NFC West. A couple of years ago, that was the worst was division of football. By Seven far. and nine won. Um, the so, NFC South turns it, you know, a new team turns it around every year. There's a lot of ebb and flow there. I, the Giants specifically, you know, I, I, I like you, Nips. I agree. I like the, the, the change. You know, sometimes change for change's sake is good yeah. just to get a new voice. They got to address their offensive line, and we've, we've gone over it. Um, you know, they have to address it. In the free agency, and I think the draft, I have to because they need, yeah. you know, three to four new starters on that offensive line. Um, so I think it all starts up front. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, think the, if they, if they if they solve that problem, I think that goes a long way towards fixing the offense. I think the Giants will be mop, a lot of moving pieces this season, and it's going to be interesting to see how they come together. I mean, I think you know now is way too early to start talking about it, just because yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. When, like you said, free agency draft, you know, un, unsigned free agents that they can pick up, but. Here's another interesting thing, too. I've been listening to uh, Philadelphia Radio the last couple of days, uh, you know, just on the tune-in. And there are a lot of fans who are not uh, – they're not pleased with Nick Foles, which, which you think, you know, 27 touchdowns and two interceptions. Well, Philadelphia fans are idiots. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, any specific reason here? Just they just don't – oh, this not isn't – this, this guy doesn't have no, any mobility. We haven't seen him over it's a full chip, season. It's He's not going to be the guy to, to run Chip Kelly's offense. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, you got a guy who last year, you know, he played he played some games, but you know that's on a dead and beaten Philly team. Uh, you know, a fish flopping on land, and then this year, you know, he basically comes in and saves the what? season for the Eagles. A fish flopping on land. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't it means that. you're, you're that dead. A you're dead. No, I made it up. I like it. So yes, it is a saying. <laughs> I, know, I know. I you said, love it. Right here on Fortune A Sports. I saw you. I saw your eyes go. Ooh. Well, how about the new coaching change who stay in that division? Uh, Jay Gruden to Washington. Yeah. How about how about Gruden and Zimmer coming off that yeah. final beatdown? They both get head coaching jobs. That's and, crazy. and then Marvin Lewis, how does he still have a job? Nah, you, you got to leave him but with the they, job. Look at where Marvin Lewis took that Bengal team from. They were a mess. They have one playoff win in the past 11 years. All right. Gr- he, they, even you know them being they, in the playoffs. I agree with you, but there's a ton of talent there. They, they've acquired a ton of talent. A ton of talent. That should be winning more, probably. Yeah. Well... Why does he get a stay? Why does everyone think? Well, Zimmer actually, I thought their defense played really well, especially after losing Geno Atkins and Jonathan Joseph. Gruden, I don't know. I mean, you think because he's got the Gruden name, he gets a little boost up? No. Well, part of it is because Bruce Allen, the GM in Washington, was uh, the GM for the Bucks with John Gruden. So he has a connection there with uh, the Gruden. So, no, I think that absolutely helped him be Gruden. You think? You know, he goes into it thinking like, oh, you know, John will help his brother out, give him some pointers. No, you know? no, no. I think it's just no. the, the knowledge of the give game. Give him some is pointers. No. Something. No, I think, no, he believes it. Hey, Drake uh, Gruden was great in the Arena League, coaching the Tampa Storm. He, uh, oh, no, he, he, played, he played in the Arena League. Uh, uh, they, uh, they, how about? They love showing that highlight whenever Gruden was on like a Monday night game <laughs> with his brother. In the stands, right? Yeah. yeah. They showed him, hey, Jake, good job. And good then they, job. And then they showed Mike Tirico at an Italian family. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all know he's Italian and not black. He was at Carmine's with the family. <laughs> and how about, uh, there's a funny thing, too, with RG3 during the week where, you know, he took to Facebook. He's an uh, idiot. You know, to call I didn't he's read like, that. He's like the little girl. Fans. He is. I didn't read that, but obviously he is not one Reach for the stars. Uh, you might the, uh, the shoot for the well. moon, and you might land on the stars. I don't think it, Get the hell it's out more of on his point to just be like, listen, fans, relax. You know, like we had a, we did have a bad year. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, but what athletes nowadays, you can't Get go out. Get off Twitter. You can't go out against the fans. If you want to promote stuff and promote your brand, go ahead and do it on Twitter. But you have to ignore the oh, detractors. Oh no, you did it on Facebook. And you know where you do it? You prove it on the field, How about and that's where you show it. Because the you go off on a rant. And, and going on Facebook or Twitter and yelling back at people or trolling these guys on Twitter, it doesn't it doesn't do you anything to make you a little petty jerk. Uh, speaking of which, right. my boy Matt Harvey, trolling, dude, what are you fan. doing, bro? What are you? First of all, he's like, I'm enjoying my wherever he was, my Thailand, Thailand vacation, Bangkok, whatever. All right, what? That's Bangkok. I don't think you should tweet that anyway, <laughs> but fine. And then, <laughs> and then a guy, a Yankee fan, gets into it with him, and he starts going back and forth with this silly Yankee yeah. fan, bro. You, you're Matty Harvey. You're banging and V. You're, you're bigger than that. Get get off Twitter, dude. Yeah. What are you doing? Don't you think that there's just some point where they've heard enough and they're like, you know what? I'm finally going to set you this guy No, but he, but he was stupid about it. He's like, your arguments are lame. 
Yeah. That's what Matt Dude. Holmby said. Like, I've, got, <laughs> what? I've, got, I've got a win in my in my career in MLB. It's like <laughs> you're never gonna win when you're going against the fans, just because you know it, it's just gonna get you know taken out of context. It's gonna be bad for you. You're Dude, not gonna win. You're a major league baseball player. You don't need to be fighting with dudes on Twitter. You know, it's funny. I saw there was a video the other day where Buster Rhymes was walking into his tour bus. And, you know, he, you know, like a couple fans out there were like, Basta, Basta, you know. Uh, and he walks right up to his bus. Ooh-ha. He goes yeah, into the bus, and the lady goes, You're so ignorant. And he just turns around and right around. And he's like, What? I need to let you know that I'm going to take a shit in my bus right now? It's like, We're human beings, too. You know, and he like absolutely flipped out on the Yeah, lady. well, no, fans are retarded. I mean, they, yeah. they expect way too much out of the players they root for. I mean, Absolutely. they're just regular people, too. Listen, they just want to try to go about their when own the 14 business and A fans come and approach me, I'm nothing but hospitable Absolutely. and gracious to you're all. I very gregorious. Gregorious. <laughs> gregarious and Hold all on. of the above. I got to look that up real quick. Stupid face. Right. No, yeah, 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 no, I agree. All right. But, another, another name we called out before, Jim Caldwell, to the uh, Lions. Yes. What? How does he get another job? He uh, he what? got that Tony Dungy endorsement. Peyton Manning goes down, and all they do is go ahead and go what? Oh, and one and fifteen. Oh, that's a good coach. I want him on my sideline. <laughs> and Jim Caldwell's not inspiring anybody because the man's facial expression hasn't changed the whole time he's been an NFL no. coach. He's in the Archell All Stars for just coaches that just sit there with the blank. Face I have on their I have no time. idea what they were thinking. Here's the, de- here's the deal in the NFL. There's a reason that there's available coaches out there, okay? I mean, you know, most of the guys that do well in these coaching positions, they stay in their position. So I feel like a lot of teams, you know, you don't have 100% backing on who the new coach that team is going to be unless it's like, like, you know, like a Gruden or a Cower coming out of retirement. Like, you look at Caldwell's record, 26-22 and 22 in his three years with the Colts. Albeit, you know, fifteen of those or fourteen of those losses coming to one fifteen. Wait, so season. what's your point? Basically, whoever you hire, you know, as your new football coach, not everybody is going to be all on board with this. But, yeah, there, but, but there's something. But the Lions were looking for a specific, I guess, format with a coach. You know that that they wanted to go with, and you know, how did Jim Caldwell they, fit any well, format? Well, here's the deal. They asked Tony Dungy, right? This is what happened. The GM of the Lions calls up Dungy and he says, hey, I got to ask you real quick. Uh, you interested in the job? And Dun- Dungy's like, no, I'm not. And they're like, all right, well, then let's talk about, like, who would you recommend to us? Caldwell is one of the guys, you know, you know based, you know, when they asked Dungy, like, you right, know, I got like it. when they yeah. said what we're looking for. Are you just for. making this up or do you know? No, I read fact. pro football talk. All right. I can read words. So Donnie got him hired. <laughs> Donnie yeah, got him yeah, hired. Yeah, basically. Well, I, I, you know, well, you know, actually, not just basically, because, he did. just because someone fails at their. I mean, look at Bill Belichick, right? He failed in Cleveland. Yep. Look at Tom Coughlin. I mean, he had success in Jacksonville, but he got ran out of Jacksonville. Um, so you can, you know, there are second lives, there are second acts um, in NFL head coaching careers. True story. But like if you saw Belichick, you'd never Jim, be like, oh yeah, he's inspiring. Jim Caldwell. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how he. Earned a spot at uh, uh, another shot at a uh, head coach job, especially one which uh, you saw my uh, coach profile. Well, I think the it's the best job. I think it's the best job Absolutely. out there. I think they really they got the Tennessee um, outplayed oh, yeah, them on Wizard Hunt. I think Wizard Hunt would have been by a in million. Yeah, Tennessee offered one million more per year for Wizard Hunt. That's like six that's expeditions, man. Pony up, Ford. Absolutely. <laughs> so Wizard Hunt, and then it kind of, Matt. They had an interview with Matt Liner today, and he said. Wizenhunt didn't make that Super Bowl run. That was Kurt Warner. Ooh, you know, yeah, because like a re- yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously, yeah. Obvious, I'm just saying. Matt Liner has that, a that couple dogs funny. in that horse. <laughs> a couple dogs in that horse. <laughs> so, yeah. Thought, well, yeah, who, who benched Matt Liner too? Exactly. Absolutely. That's why I know. Listen, that's that's the dog. I'm just in the a horse. storyteller. I'm not the the judger of moral here. But uh, interesting scenario here with Wizenhunt because <laughs> he's got to see. Does he want Jake Locker to be his starter going yes. forward? Now I think Jake well, Locker could be pretty if good. If you could say healthy. There's a very I, – I love Jake Locker. You know, mobile white quarterback. We never see You this. love him like you love your half-brother. Now, here's the – I got to f- see the date here real quick. Don't don't be – no, no. <laughs> All right, May 3rd is a very important uh, date here because this is a deadline. And then that's the – Does he have signing bonus? That's the date oh, deadline that, for what? Uh, that they could pick up the fifth-year option on Jake Locker. Oh. With Jake Locker for the Titans. Jake Locker has been in the league four years? Three, but I don't know. They have to pick up the the fifth year option uh, now. You have to. He's gonna play for the Titans next year. It's just is it gonna be as a starter or a backup? Now, Why? who's taking his place? Hasselbeck, Kurt Warner. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The draft is like five days after this May third deadline, so I think you'll see a little, 
you know, uh, you'll see some signs as to where they're going. Like if they get rid of Locker, maybe Tennessee moves up, you know, in the draft. Gets a pick there. Maybe they trade with St. Louis no, or but something. but for what they're going to have to pay Locker for that fifth year. And oh, it's what like co- 16. And what, no. 16? Something like that. It's that much? 13, 13. Well. Still significant. That That's more than I thought it would be. But I still think Locker, I I think, you know, like you said, Nibs, he's got to stay healthy. But he has a skill. He has a skill set. All right. Absolutely. And then um, the other Cincinnati corner, Mike Zimmer. Yeah. Minnesota. That's Minnesota. a dead job. Do you realize the next two years talent. they're going to be playing outside at yeah. uh, the University of Minnesota Stadium? Uh, yeah, well, they, I'll tell you what, well, though. Lot, you got a lot of talent. You got AP, you got Corderell, Greg Jennings. You know, I, you know, it looks like uh, Derek Carr is going to be the quarterback that goes there. I mean, Norv I don't like Derek in, uh, Carr. But... Are you saying, you saying Norv might be the uh, coordinator? Yeah. yeah. I guess they said Cleveland's going to honor the contract, but they're also going to let him interview, Cleveland's too. Cleveland's a mess right now. Nobody wants that job. Nobody, because they know that the GM's just going to be up their ass all day. And they're waiting on uh, the guy Kason. I think Kason, right out of Denver, the OC. Right, right. But how good is he? I mean, I gotta see. I gotta say, Peyton Manning's running that whole show. Well, Mike McCoy was there last year. He did a nice job in, uh, in San Diego. San Diego huh? Yeah, re- reviving Phil Rivers' career. Uh, was the other, the defensive coordinator of Seattle too? Is another name Quinn. popping up? Yeah. Quinn. They uh, Seattle. I mean, basically, Cleveland's waiting on. These playoffs to be, or at least, uh, who know. cares? They're, well, a yeah, bunch of dead, they're a bunch of dead ass teams. Who cares who they have? Their hey, early favorite listen, I thought was uh, Cle- Justin. Cleveland could have themselves a nice little start here. Cleveland has some pieces. They definitely have some pieces. They, they need could, to address the quarterback position. They could get Bernie. They said they said they love Mantell. Cleveland loves Man- if Mantell's there, they're, they're taking him. Maybe they, they trade with Houston. They might make a move to go get they him. Have they to might because he won't be available. You know what? If you like him that much, go get him. Give up whatever you need to give up and go get him. You have to because if you need a quarterback in this league, if you don't have a quarterback, didn't you, the Redskins just do that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, look, it look it looked good last year. It looked good last year. I also saw that. Uh, it believe, also looks good if, for the, the Rams if, this year. If you believe oh, in the guy, God. well, maybe they're wrong. But if you believe in the guy, you go get him. You you go like the, when the Jets move up to go get Sanchez. It turned out it didn't work out. But if you believe in him, you got to go get him. What the Giants did with Eli. If you believe in the quarterback, you go get him because you need a quarterback in this league. I also saw Bill O'Brien uh, very enamored with Blake Bortles. So, you know, I think that's a lot of trade down. Maybe they trade down. No, again, I wouldn't trade. I, I take him. I take him right there. Just right there take at one. Yeah, that's but your you guy, get that extra him. pick. And I'm sure you'd have to. I'm sure four, right? the, you have to read the, the tea leaves. The two but. or the Jacksonville. I don't think Jacksonville will go after Bortles. I know Why not? a couple guys. I don't know, because I'm sure they'd go with Bridgewater or Manzella. Why? Because they're going to put asses. I think Jacksonville's pick is solely going to be based on you putting know how you asses put asses in the, in the seats. seats. Winning. Win. Yes, we know. But Sign I don't think T-Bow. Bortles. I think Bortles is the third best quarterback. That's, that's in a good point, draft. Nips. No, no, they're not they're trying to do that because they would have hired Tebow. They, they would have got Tebow. That's an excellent point. On the uh, NFL Twitter draft that they had going on today, they had Sammy Watkins going to the Jaguars. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what you need, more receivers. Well, hopefully some that uh, don't get suspended for the year. I'll be interested well, to see if uh, exactly. one of these teams that really needs a quarterback goes at Watkins and then maybe tries to make a move for Taj Boyd uh, in the second round or even trying to trade into the end of the first. How I don't about know. A, how about the Geno Smith experiment this year? I don't know. No. I avoid that. Even though Taj Boyd much more athletic. Than I mean, you still got a lot of quarterbacks coming next year too. So, cool. Brett Hundley, Hundley, Winston, Mariota. Winston, right? Yeah. Winston and Mariota, those are two big ones. Yeah, so, and Hundley's good too. That's true. Yeah, Winston's gonna be the number one pick. I don't think so. Yeah. No, I mean he will be, but no, I don't will. think he should be. All right, we done for the evening. We're getting cake. We got cake. Let's just take some pictures with it. We'll All post right. them. All right. Look on 14A Instagram, everywhere else, for pictures with a birthday cake. It'll be fun. That cake, 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 cake. Big, th- <laughs> cake, 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 cake. Big thanks to Decision Dave, as always, this evening. Dave in the market for a masseuse job coming up here soon. All right. All right. Is he going to practice on you? Wow, we practiced on calls. Enough with the gay Ooh, jokes. I have nice. a lady. All right? You're the one that doesn't have a lady. Maybe we start asking you <laughs> how gay you are. You, might, you got actual brothers you can marry. Creep. <laughs> <laughs> and a sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, Molly's good to go then. Oh, <laughs> I got it all. By the way, uh, we'll be up on SoundCloud later tonight. Yes, we will. 
Next week, Patty Boy Farrell in oh, studio. Holla. Nice. Gotta love that. Uh, getting ready for his fight on Super Bowl week. The Friday is Super yeah, Bowl week. 31st. It's actually the same day as Wing Bowl down in Philly. In West Orange. Yeah. No, I heard that's a big deal, the Wing Bowl. Oh, thing. yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely nuts. Uh, I found out the, the place where Patty's fighting. That's not the ice rink. It's, by it's, it's, back the, zoo. it's the Cody Center. Yeah, so we can't go to the zoo, flip off the monkey. It is, r- it is right off. near the zoo, though. Oh, maybe we'll we will. Take your pants off. A lot of security around there. It's from Anchorman, bro. You, you want to? What animal would you take your pants off with? <laughs> Chimpanzee, I guess. That's the animal of choice. <laughs> nah. they'll, rip, they'll rip your dick off. No, nah. they have the opposable thumb. How about you? I wouldn't take my pants off with animals. <laughs> Unless said no one ever. <laughs> <laughs> Unless her name was. How about you, Nips? Miley. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just pick an animal. The giraffe. All right, that's cool. See, he has an imagination. You don't. They, they wouldn't be able to see me. I'd be. That'd be too low down. Hi. Uh, all right. So on behalf of the rest of the fourteen eight team, we are out of here for the evening. We'll see you next week. Patty Boy Farrell live in studio. Fourteen eight Sports on Fifty Minutes Fame Radio. We out. <laughs>